Hello, welcome back to Jim Snedeker Music. This week I want to uh, go ahead and move forward. Last week we talked about downloading view score 4. And this week I want to give a brief overview, cover about four points with you, uh, just a short overview of view score 4. To get started, I'll go up here to the top row. You see this little icon? This is part of the install. Click on that. And now we see some apps, <clears throat> what is featured, what they're featuring uh, uh, as part of the new application. And then we also see the, the new sounds that have been uh, developed as part of the MuseScore 4 implementation. You'll notice I've got this one checked, the keys downloaded some of those, downloaded that set. Uh, Audacity here, that is a digital audio workstation uh, you should really check out, open source as well. But for today's purposes, let's just click our MuseScore uh, icon, MuseScore loads. Okay, very good. So we open up into this window it's a little different than version 3. We've got our scores displayed. We um, also, just to show you here, this is uh, me actually signed into the Muse score account. And where that comes in handy is with the new version, there is a cloud saving capability for each of your scores. So I have an account and I have logged in and that's what this user ID is. Over here we see this little cloud uh, icon this particular score I have saved five days ago in the cloud. However, next to it is one I'm saving locally on my own computer, and you can see that it was saved today. So that's a little different and a new development and really something quite helpful in the new version. Plugins are uh, applications that enhance uh, functionality in MuseScore. I've not used these yet. I will point to the Learn tab because here there are some really helpful videos to get you started. Certainly if you're new to MuseScore you may want to check out setting up your score, the basics of score writing. You might want to look at text and lyrics. Now you'll notice these aren't very long so they're just enough to get you started but also they're very helpful. Hi thanks for hanging out with me today. I've got a free gift for you. So make sure you either click the link in the description or click that little banner in the top of the screen. Okay, back to our scores tab again. We see the scores that I'm working on displayed. I'm going to go ahead and click our score. Right now it's empty because I haven't loaded a score, correct? Just to point out, I have chosen the dark theme. I'll go back here and I'll click my score and opening it up, you can see uh, the score that I'm working on. Um, I'm using the piano keyboard uh, to do to view or to select that. I simply go up here to view, and if you check it, uncheck it, of course it goes away. And if you select it through the view, the piano keyboard will appear again. Okay, if we want to add some notes using the piano keyboard, we'll first want to turn on our note entry, which you've done here with the mouse, but then you want to make sure that your, um, in fact, what I will do here is I will move the cursor first, okay? Now I'm going to type N, and the note entry is on, okay? We're now in note entry mode, but you see where my cursor is? Instead of being up at the top where it wanted to put me, I've actually moved it down here. So a couple things I'd like to point out. I have a C whole note, okay? Down here in the keyboard, C3 is the key that has been pressed. So that's how note entry works. If we want to, let's say we're going to just do some quarter notes after that, it will <coughs> come over here. Let's say... Uh, okay, we'd like a, a, there's a D and an E and an F and a G. And I am simply typing the key <coughs> uh, name 
on my computer keyboard you'll see the note changing on the piano keyboard on your screen and the notes showing up here in the score so that's it for note entry mode we turn that off and now we can actually edit this if we want to let's say we'd like to add a G note <clears throat> what I've done here is I've selected all the notes <clears throat> by just clicking but if I want to type a G note I will go and I will press G so what has happened what, what have I done I've changed that uh, D to a G now I also clicked on a D and now I've got the notes together so that's how you can do multiple notes in the score so one more thing about before I let you go my last point I did want to cover I'm going to before I leave this however I'm going to turn off my note entry and I'm going to come up here to preferences and show you a couple things if you do use a MIDI keyboard a MIDI keyboard you'll want to check and make sure number one you'll want to make sure this play notes when editing is clicked is checked you want to make sure that's true without that <clears throat> you will try to edit things but you won't hear any sound so you definitely want to do that the other thing I'll show you in preferences also is down here at IO this is if you have connected a MIDI keyboard also using the piano keyboard um, you'll want to make sure your notes are turned on but for the purpose of MIDI we have an audio device my system that knows what that is the buffer size is 1024 here's what's important my little MIDI keyboard is an M audio key station mini 32 so that is selected in here got that and then I say OK and that's really important too if you want your MIDI keyboard uh, you want to actually play the notes on it and have them show up in the score so that's what I have for you today those four points we looked at the menu bar uh, what's available in the new application we checked out the interface I showed you where the, some of the intro videos are we talked about account login integration and the ability to save on cloud we also have looked at note entry from the piano keyboard and a MIDI keyboard